Hi, today I'm going to be talking about, uh, this is just an old uh, Delco Remy alternator that uh, has been sitting in a barn for I don't know how many years. Uh, but the other day we got it out and uh, cleaned it up and today I'm just going to be, I've already taken it apart and I've been doing some playing on it. Uh, and I'm just going to do a just quick video about how the very basics of, uh, of an alternator. You see I've taken the pulley off and the fan and I'll be taking off the uh, the housing and you got to keep up with all these little spacers um, that are spread throughout the uh, shaft on this thing but it's got a bearing in the front and the back that basically hold the uh, the rotor in place and the rotor is what provides the magnetic field the rotating magnetic field uh, within the coils uh, that actually generate the alternating current that uh, gives the alternator its name. So you can see as I take this uh, front cover off, and I've taken all the bolts and everything that need to be taken off to remove the cover. There's four bolts that would normally be here, and they actually come in through the back. But you can see, by, based on all the wires coming out of it, that uh, that I've already been doing doing a little bit with it. I'm gonna take this uh, front cover off, and out came the rotor rotor just slipped out of this front cover. There's a little bearing inside that uh, that the rotor turns on. So we'll just set this over to the side. But here you can get a get a nice view of the rotor. And I don't know if you can see very well inside of here there are some uh, uh, wires wrapped around the inside of the inside of the rotor. And what this does is the uh, the regulator within the alternator will uh, allow current to pass through that inner coil and that will magnetize this, uh, this rotor. And so you'll have a uh, positive and uh, a north and a south pole. So one of these will become one of these sets of teeth that you see around the outside of the, uh, the rotor will become the north pole and the other set of teeth will become the south pole. So as this rotates within the within the stator, which we'll get to in a moment, uh, you'll have an alternating magnetic field that flows through those coils, generating an alternating current. And here are the slip rings uh, that uh, the brushes make contact with, and one's connected to uh, the voltage regulator on this particular alternator, and the other is connected to, uh, basically, to, uh, to ground. And the, uh, I'm sorry, one's connected to positive, and the other is basically connected to ground uh, through the regulator, and the regulator will allow uh, so much current to pass to ground. Um, and when it allows that current, it allows this to build up a magnetic field. And when there's a call for, when it needs to provide additional voltage, it provides uh, more path to ground, uh, creating a larger magnetic field. And since this is turning with the engine uh, at any given speed, that greater magnetic field will increase the voltage. Here we have the uh, basically the stator windings. I'm going to move a couple of these wires from the back so we can pop this out. But here we have the, uh, the stator, and the stator consists of uh, three sets of coils uh, wrapped around. Basically, the stator is a magnetic, uh, a, ma uh, a metallic core, kind of a ferromagnetic core. And these three, uh, these three contacts provide access to each of the individual, uh, the one end of the individual coils. And you can see here there's a little tab where the other end of all three coils is uh, coupled together. They're just basically all connected into a, a, a Y configuration. Um, so that as that uh, rotor spins within this coil uh, or set of coils, uh, one of these will become positive as the other two are becoming uh, are heading negative um, and they're 120 degrees out of phase and since it spins with the uh, speed of the engine as the RPMs change so does the uh, the frequency so it's not like your normal 60 Hertz from a, from a wall outlet so that gives you your individual 
your individual access to the individual phases of this three phase alternator. Um, so there you go. Here we have the, the back housing and we have you can see within there here are the brushes that uh, that kind of popped out as um, as I took out the rotor. So um, you can see I've got a, a ground wire connected to one of the brushes and then in the back you can't really see it but there I've got another wire connected to the uh, to the other brush that's kind of back in there. I don't know if you can see it right now. It's a little bit covered in uh, covered in grease and you can see these little springs and you'll note to get this back in I will uh, push these push the brushes down inside and uh, through this little hole I'll put a uh, paper clip. Uh, paper clip will go inside the hole to hold it all together. I'll actually insert it through a hole in the back here. Uh, there's a corresponding hole back there. I'll just insert that in and that will give me uh, brushes that are tucked away so that I can put the rotor back in place. Okay, And inside there's a uh, set of roller bearings uh, that are on the, the very interior. Uh, you probably can't get a good look at those. Uh, kind of grease them at some point. I don't know if that was a good idea or not. Probably probably not, but back in here is a, uh, is a roller bearing. So I want to start putting this thing back together and uh, I'm just going to show you a very quick uh, demo of it powering a, a small lot based on uh, charging, you know, just manually charging the, uh, the rotor field. Uh, we'll charge that uh, rotor field up and, uh, and we'll just tap into a couple of these phases and you know, we'll light something up. Okay, so now the brushes are in place and you can see my paper clip is in place holding the brushes down and I'll pull it out as we put the uh, rotor back in. But we want to make sure we have our wires kind of clipped to our brushes at the correct locations and those will provide our field inside the rotor. And we'll be putting the stator back in. So now we have our stator back in position. Now we'll be placing the rotor back in. Slip rings in. And I don't know about all alternators, but on this one it doesn't seem to matter if you put it on, uh, you know, which orientation, uh, really left or right. But you do need to make sure that you get your stator lined up um, with the little holes here, which it looks like I don't have, so just make a fine adjustment on that. Put this back on. Sorry about that, I had to step away and actually get the, uh, the bolts that would actually go back into this and then have them on the table. So we'll just set these guys back together. Just use a 516 cents wrench just for future reference. Tighten these guys down a little bit.
you saw before I had all the the fan on and everything. I think now I'll just put the put the nut on and that should provide everything that we need for this little demonstration. Just use a little Allen wrench and slap this guy on real quick. enough for what we're going to do so in the back I don't know if you can see but through one of these little slots we have access to the individual coils and we'll have access to the phases and here we just have a little a little light that I've had for probably 20 years separate out a few of these wires And it doesn't matter which of these phases we uh, we we get into in a normal uh, application of an alternator, we would uh, we would be passing everything through a, a three-phase bridge rectifier, which would uh, convert three-phase AC into just plain direct current. Um, but in this in this little demonstration, we're just we're just going to try to see if we can get anything out of this guy. So I'm just going to be connecting to any of these two phases, and since they're 120 degrees out of phase with each other, one of them will be uh, going uh, will be uh, going positive as the uh, as the others are going negative. So we'll have a voltage difference, and we'll be able to see that uh, reflected in this little lamp. And we'll also, in a moment, check uh, check the voltage coming out with the uh, with the multimeter. So. I'll need just a second to grab a battery to power the field. So here I just have an old Craftsman 18 volt uh, drill battery, which um, which it doesn't really do very good. It's uh, it's just always down. So if I put it on the charger, I get some I get some reasonable uh, duration out of it. But if it's off for very long, it uh, it doesn't do much good. So. We're going to uh, just power up our our rotor, and we're just applying straight 18 volts to it. We're going to full field it. Actually, probably more than full field it. In the car, it'd be just getting at most 12 or 14. We're going to try to hit it with 18. And we'll see some sparks, so we'll just latch on there. Now our rotor is uh, fully energized, and you can see the maybe you can see our little lamp just. Uh, Just hand turning, uh, we get a little bit of light. I want to bring out the drill and uh, actually get on it here. So you can see there, without too many RPMs, we can get uh, you know get a reasonable amount of power out of that. Uh, but that is with a uh, very charged uh, rotor. So we'll just unclip this and we'll just check out our our voltage output. And this is going to be AC, so it really doesn't matter what uh, orientation we uh, connect these guys. So we'll just for the AC voltage. You can see there's really nothing coming out until we hit it with the drill. Actually, I'll just start with a quick hand turn. See how we're getting one and a half volts or so out of that. Drill up. So we got 18 volt or 8 volts. That's pretty good for using a half uh, half down drill and a not that great of a drill battery to power a rotor. But it's kind of neat just to be able to energize that uh, that feel and uh, just kind of see how it works. So hopefully you enjoyed and maybe you learned something. Have a great day.